Our influencer of the week is Masai Ujiri, the man who built the Raptors into an elite basketball squad. But it wasn't always that way. Toronto was more concerned with hockey back in 1995. Yes, even with the Leafs. Basketball was American and Canadian fans had to look from the outside in. But not anymore. Now the Toronto Raptors are in the NBA Finals and millions are tuning in. Baskets are great, but a big part of the Raptors' success is the team's president, 48-year-old Masai Ujiri, the first ever African-born manager of a major sports team. He's made the Raptors not just Toronto's, but Canada's team. The stands are packed, revenue has doubled, and the team is now worth an estimated $1.7 billion by Forbes. So how did he do this? Well, all under Ujiri. Drake came on board as the team's global ambassador. Then came the We the North campaign. And Canadians suddenly became loudly patriotic. The t-shirts were everywhere. But most striking, Ujiri's willingness to gamble it all. Last season, after getting swept out of the conference semifinals, he bet his full hand. He fired a coach and traded key players superstar DeMar DeRozan. But Look who we got in return, Kawhi Leonard. You might have heard of him since he did this. Later, the Raptors get the shot to go. Ujiri's success didn't come out of the blue. Plenty of people helped him along the way. Joining me now from Tampa, Florida is David Thorpe. He's a friend of Ujiri's who also helped him land his first NBA gig all the way back in 2002. So, David, I mean, he seems so low-key, but he has amassed so much power. What, what, what's his secret? Well, the power probably comes from the position he has. He, he's, he's got the best job in one of the best teams in sports and what an amazing franchise. Uh, there's no question that he earned it. And, and here's the bottom line. We, we live in a bottom line business here in the NBA, and he's won. Wherever he's gone, he's been successful. Uh, what he's done has worked, and you see the fruits of the labor of that uh, there in Toronto now. He stayed with you for a while in, in the early days, and I've heard a story about some map after he'd met people. Tell me about that, about making connections. So his first job as a scout, if I remember, is we're going back a long way here. Uh, it got almost uh, 20 years, I think, or so. Uh, he wasn't getting paid. He was just his expenses were being covered. And we, we created a kind of a, of a, of a PowerPoint, but it, was, it wasn't digital. It was handwritten. It was, we called it the size sphere of influence. I think we actually got it typed up eventually at Kinko's. Basically what it was was just it showed where he knew people in the world, where he could stay, where he kind of knew the lay of the land, because uh, he had played in Europe and had a lot of friends in Europe. And we didn't want him to appear to be someone who just played professionally in one city and was from Africa. No, he was a very worldly guy. And we wanted the people he interviewed with to, to understand that, that his connections went beyond just a few players in a few cities. Well, and look at him now. <laughs> um, so David, we've seen under Masai Ujiri, we've got Drake now, we've got We The North. How much of, of his success has been building this brand? I think the answer is not the individual. I think it's the success that builds the brand. Otherwise, it's, it's kind of fool's gold. Uh, it's a cool city. Uh, the team now is, is really good. Uh, I think they're top three in the NBA the last five years in wins for the regular season. So even though they've been disappointing in postseason, everyone's disappointed except for the Warriors in one year Cleveland because you have to win. But the Raptors have been incredibly good. I can tell you as someone who trains a lot of NBA players, uh, they love Toronto. I, like, I've never had anyone complain, o only like going to c the city of Toronto, with the exception of sometimes it's really cold. You met him when he was first starting out. Does it surprise you that he's reached this pinnacle? It's, a, it's surprising in that the history of our country, and, and in terms of, of basketball in America at the professional level, isn't great to bring in foreigners. Uh, we're not great at bringing in Africans, African Americans. Uh, uh, any, anyone that isn't basically an old white person has kind of always run sports in, in, uh, in our country. It's not a great look. Uh, I'm enormously proud of what Messiah has done for the, for the doors he's opened. We need women running teams. We need people from all over the world running teams. One of the great things about the Raptors is the city is so cosmopolitan, right? It's, it's so multicult multicultural and diverse. Uh, we need our leagues to look like that. It's certainly in the NBA where it's a global game. 
Uh, and I think Masai can start that process. He already has started the process. Uh, he, he, he doesn't just look at American college players. He looks at basketball players. If you look at his history, he's always had players, not just from Africa, not just American not, and Europeans, Asians. He, he considers everyone, as he should, because the whole world's playing the sport now. So uh, I, I'm, I, I'm not surprised that he's successful. I just didn't know if he'd get the chance. And it, it's amazing that he did. And, and again, that's why I start crediting the owners of, of, the, of the Raptors for giving him a chance to do this.